السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله أكبر الله أكبر. الله
والبديل والقناطير المطنطرة من الذهب والفضة والخيل المسومة والأنعام والحرث ذلك متاع الحياة الدنيا والله عنده حسن المآب قل أنبئكم بخير من ذلك للذين اتقوا عند ربهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها وأزواج مطهرة ورضوان من الله والله بصير في العباد الله جعلنا من عباده رب الشحف صدري ويسر لي أمري وحمل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي واللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا إله إلا الله واللهم اجعلنا من الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر أمين يا رب العالمين My khutbah today is primarily dedicated to the students at the university and by extension young people across this country and inshallah ta'ala the world I want to start بإذن by telling you a little bit about some background of what life is like for college students in a non-Muslim country. Muslim students in a non-Muslim country. The first thing they're afraid of is falling into fitna. When you go to a university like NYU, or you go to Columbia, or you in the United States, or you go to Georgetown or some other university, you're, the Muslims are the minority, the non-Muslims are the majority of course. And the culture and the environment of the university is one that can completely destroy you. It is a place of learning. It is a place where you're going to get exposed to different kinds of ideas and enhance your mind, absolutely. But at the same time, you don't just walk into a class, learn your lessons, and go home with your eyes closed. You have to walk through a campus. And on that campus, you're going to be exposed to quite a few things. Your, some of your best friends are going to be into drugs, and they're going to be going to parties, and they're going to be inviting you to them. Their classrooms are going to be co-educational, so you're going to be sitting next to a girl that's barely dressed, and there's no other seat for you to sit and you have a three-hour class sitting there next to this girl. There's going to be, you know, the, the interaction between men and women is completely open. And at first, if you're a Muslim and you're, you want to hold on to your values, you're very scared for yourself, and you're extremely worried, and you're constantly looking down as you're walking through campus, but when six months go by and one year goes by, your eyes start rising a little, a little more than a little more than a little more. And at first, when somebody spoke to you, some girl came up to you and spoke to you, you said, Astaghfirullah al and you became very nervous Even though they were not in a non-Muslim environment, they were all by themselves, and yet 
on the one hand, when I am over there, and when a young man or a young woman is over there, and they see something wrong happening, they say, this is how the non Muslims do it. This is their way. This is not our way. We are better than that. But here, you might see Muslims doing things. You might see a fellow believer involved in activities. Your own friends involved in things. And it slowly becomes normal for you. You know, we're just talking, we're not doing anything else. So that's the first thing I wanted to illustrate to, to all of us. Whether, wherever we're looking, living on the lost earth, the fitna will come, the trial will come, especially at a young age. Now the second thing I want to give to you is not just guilt. It's actually an acknowledgement that Allah put certain things in human nature. Allah created us a certain way, and He says Himself, Doesn't He know who He created? He knows. He is the, he's the designer, the creator, the engineer of this human being, and our personalities, and our emotions, the things we desire, the things we're attracted to. These are things Allah put inside of us. And He mentioned that in the ayah that I began my khutbah with. In Surah Ali Imran, Allah says, I will go through the entire ayah, just this first part. For people, for people, this is not just Muslims or non-Muslims, it's all people. The love of different kinds of desires was beautified that comes from women. In other words, men are obsessed with women and this was put inside of them. It's not even something they can control. It's not even something they can help. It's just there. It's just there. It was put inside of you. You didn't develop it yourself. Suyina is the, is the seal of the Mujhud. It's the passive form. The other unique thing about this ayah is Allah does not say that the shahawat were, you know, beautified. Hub was shahawat. Hub was shahawat. And hub is something natural that comes to the human being. Love of fulfilling desires. So, you know, unlike the Christian tradition, for example, in which they make you feel guilty for temptation. They say temptation is an evil. And the devil is trying to give you temptation. The Quran is saying that your urges and your desire and your attraction to the opposite gender is actually Even if it's killing us, there are people who desire smoking, even though it's killing them, they'll keep smoking. 
can't stop themselves. There are people who keep eating. The doctor is telling them you're killing yourself. Your cholesterol level is too high. You're going to have a heart attack. Stop with the pizza. Stop so much food and they can't stop. They keep eating and eating and eating. This is, this is a tendency inside human beings. They cannot stop themselves. So much so that they end up harming who? Themselves. The reason Allah put haram in place, the reason Allah put prohibitions in place is so that you only take so much that you can stay healthy. In this dunya and the akhirah. That you control yourself and you protect yourself from harm in this world and in the next world. And so Allah Azza wa Jalla, when it comes to my desire and your desire for the opposite gender, He puts some rules in place. But these rules are different from food. They're not the same. It's not, not like the prohibition of alcohol. Like we cannot consume alcohol. It's not the same that the, the prohibition of zina. It's not like that. Or the prohibition of killing someone. You know, you're not supposed to kill another human being. That's a prohibition too. Or the prohibition of, you know, consuming riba, for example. These prohibitions are there. But the prohibition between men and women is different. It's different. Allah does not say, لا تزيلوا. He says, لا تقرب الزنا. لا تقرب الفواحش. And the expression I want to talk to you more about this is the, last, the, the, the next part of my khutbah, is how does Allah teach us to stay away from this evil? How do you have that desire to stay away at the same time? He says, One small expression from Surah Al-Anam covers everything. Even though this is one of the most powerful subjects in the entire Quran. A very heavy subject in the Quran and Fahish. Let's look at it bit by bit. First of all, he said, Don't go near it. Don't go near it. He doesn't say don't go near alcohol. He just says don't consume it. Just get away from it. He doesn't say don't go near killing someone. Don't go near. He doesn't say that. But he says that. He did other very few places Allah says don't go near something. Usually you tell someone don't do it. Don't eat this. Don't say don't go near this food. You say don't eat it. Allah will say things about crimes. As you are getting closer, you are actually in more and more and more danger. You're in more and more and more danger. You know, if you go to the store, and you're walking by the refrigerator, and they have all these juices, but you have some store, they also have beer. When you walk by the beer, you're not tempted. You're not tempted. But when you walk by a female that you're attracted to, something happens to you. When you walk by some, some restaurant that's selling pork, nothing happens to you. <laughs> Nothing happens to you. When you walk by someone you're attracted to, and you see something that, that calls, your, calls the attention of your eyes, or you smell a perfume, something happens in your brain immediately. There are studies on this stuff. Some even some psychologists even argue that, that it's actually predisposed human nature. They're bound to look. Like they, you're gonna, if you hear the, the clacking of like a high heels, your eyes are just going to go there. You know, there's some social psychology studies done on this. What is the Muslim told? Even if you look, the Prophet told us, even if it's in your nature, you just want to look. The first glance is for you, the second one's against you. Put your eyes away. The first one is not the second one is. Watch yourself. Watch it. This is the mercy of this deen. Allah doesn't say, never look at women. Or you can never look at if you even get a single glance, you are going to burn it. No, 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 no. Wait. There's a, there's a human desire, there's human, human nature that's beyond their control. But once you did look, now you have to put yourself under control. What a powerful religion that acknowledges that weakness of the human being. Instead of blaming the human being for it, it works with it. It, it. it adapts to it, it works with it. This is what I mean by Allah Ya'ala Al Al-Khala. He doesn't, doesn't he know who He created. He knows that the temptation and the desire is there. Now, He says, La taqabu, don't go near it. You know what that means for you and me? That means we have to identify what are different things that we do? What are different environments that take me closer and closer and closer? Everybody knows in that is haram. Everybody knows intimacy between a man and a woman that are not married to each other is haram. That is clear. There's no confusion there. But if not everybody is clear if they're sitting at a restaurant and just talking about the weather. You know, they're not really doing it. I didn't touch her. I just talked to her. We just had lunch. No big deal. But you know that the thoughts that are, guys, the guys that are sitting here, the men that are sitting here, you know the thoughts that are running in your mind. There's ijma on them. I don't have to explain them to you. And this is the masjid. I don't have to spell them out to you. The thoughts that cross your mind, you know them. You are inching closer in your mind. Maybe she would be a good wife. I don't know. But maybe I should find out more about her. Maybe we should have a few more lunches together. You know? 
or you just sit in the university in the classroom and the sister, you can ask any guy for the homework. Would you go ask the sister? Assalamualaikum, did you, uh, I, I didn't copy the homework assignment probably, could you help me with that? No, no, and somebody said, well, why are you doing that? No, no, bro, I was just asking for homework, Astaghfirullah, what are you talking about? I didn't do anything haram. Is it haram to ask for homework? You see, what you're doing, you can justify it to people, because you can clearly say asking for homework is not haram. You can say that. But you know what you can't say to yourself? Yourself. Nobody can check this for you, you have to check it for yourself. You have to uphold your account for yourself. Am I doing this because I some in some way am attracted to this woman? Am I doing this because somehow it feels good to me? Am I getting closer and closer and closer to the fact? This is the kind of policing only you can do for yourself. Nobody can control it. Nobody can control it. No, and you can justify it. If you want to get away with it, you can always justify it. There's no fatwa that can protect you. There's nobody that can point a finger at you. If you want to get away with it, you will get away with it. So that's why I have problem. Then he says al falahish He doesn't say al falahish subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says all forms of shamelessness. Just like in the ayah of Ali Imran, he says al shahwat He didn't say shahwa. Shahwa is one desire. Shahwat is what? Multiple desires. al shahwat min al-nisa. Hubbu shahwat min al-nisa. Which means, which means our, our, our drawing and our attraction to women, men's attraction to women, is not just about physical intimacy in the end. It's not just about that. Actually, her smile is attractive to you. Her voice is attractive to you. Her face is attractive to you. Her company is attractive to you. Her comments are attractive to you. Everything about her, like I love everything about her. MashaAllah, she's so knowledgeable. <laughs> you know, some, some, some man is obsessed with a woman. He loves everything about her. It's not just one shahwa, it's multiple shahwa. It's multiple desires. Just like that on the other side, he said, Al-Fawahish. He doesn't say, you know, Wala taqrabu al-Fawahisha. No, Wala taqrabu al-Fawahish. Ma bahara bin hama kalata. All forms of temptations and rudeness. You're going to cross the line. The worst of it is zina. But there are other kinds of fawahisha. Maybe you just made an inappropriate joke. Maybe you just made, you made sure your voice is a little louder so she can hear you. And you just check to see if she looked over. You know, and you've got a beard and she's got a hijab. But that doesn't matter, my friend. That doesn't matter. When, when, when this game starts, when Shaitan starts playing this game in your head, then you don't remember the ayat at that time. All you remember is, man, I made a joke and she smiled. And that's playing in your head the whole day. The whole day. You go over and you say, Salaamu Alaikum. She says, Wa Alaikum As Salaam with a smile. And then that, Wa Alaikum As Salaam. You're smiling the rest of the day. You know? And nobody else knows. That's just between you and you and Allah. And that's it. You know? And Fawahish are the, the ways you will get real men, the ways you will get real men, you won't even realize. You won't even realize before it's too late. Before you realize you touched her. Before you realize things get hurt. Before you realize you start sending text messages to each other about how much you love her and how much you want to marry her and all of this. And when we graduate, we're going to be together and all of it. I want to talk to your father one day, but I'm too scared right now. And it started already. And you're roped in and you're thinking about it all the time. And you're, you're sitting in the classroom. The shit is and you're texting me, I miss you. That's what you're doing. And she's writing, I miss you back, inshallah, after Ramadan. You know, and this is not, and this happens. This is a reality. We can only, we can't just talk about theory, we have to deal with reality. And if this has happened to you, you have to recognize in yourself, you've gone too far, you've crossed a line. If you want to marry this sister, go approach her family and be, be direct and clear. You know? Don't have in secret people that you admire or you have romantic relationships with and you're keeping in secret. Don't do that. Don't do that. Allah knows that that will happen. That's why He said it. Surah Al-Nisa is revealed to Muslims. It's a Madani Surah. It's revealed to Muslims. The Muslims will have these problems too. So Allah Azza wa gives advice to you. So this is about a fawahish. Understand that a text message could be fawahish. A Facebook post could be fawahish for you. That could be the way that you're crossing the line. It could be phone calls. It could be just you walking down the hall from one class to another. It could be anything. You have to identify that for yourself. I have to identify that for myself. And I have to protect myself from it. Staying away from this is just like staying away from drugs. It's just like staying away from alcohol. The people who drink it love it. And they, they think they cannot live without it. Just like the guy who's obsessed with the girl. He thinks he can't live without it. 
thinks he can't survive, but he can. Allah has given you the strength of character. My time is up, so I'll just conclude, inshaAllah, just ma'ala minna wa ma'ala. There are aspects of shamelessness that are hidden. They are private, only you know them. And there are aspects of you crossing the line that are open, how it be open. Alhamdulillah, in a Muslim society, for the most part, you are safe from what is open. Nobody openly does all kinds of shamelessness. But you, what you're not safe from is what is hidden. What I am not safe from is what is hidden. And this is for the men who are married and the men who are not married. This is a fitna that does not go away just because you have become. You have to protect yourself until the day you die. Like one of my teachers was asked, when does a man stop desiring a woman? And he said, five minutes after death. <laughs> you know, we have to protect ourselves. There is no way out. May Allah Azza wa Jalla protect this ummah and protect this youth from making those mistakes. May Allah Azza wa Jalla provide all of them healthy, clean marriages that they're able to provide and, and, and produce pure families that are going to carry the banner of Islam for the future generation. Barakallahu wa lakum fi al-Qur'an al-Kakeem wa nafa'ani wa iya'ku wa ayya'ku 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 wa ayya'